welcome back to another episode of Love, Life and Disability with me, Kay Ashton. Today, I'll be speaking to Glenn. Now, Glenn is a dad. He has children and he's also single. He'll be joining me today to talk about dating as a single dad and how some people would say having a child or children in his, in his case, he's got four lovely children, has impacted him in finding true love because some women stand interested when they find out that he's got children some people may stay interested but then just kind of go off the scene and others just don't choose to match glenn you may have spotted from first dates or you might have even spotted him from one of the most recent programs channel four have done which is five guys a week which came out at just about the start of lockdown glenn's still single several years later similar to myself now mate glenn thank you so much for joining the show today glenn <laughs> Tell me more. Um, so basically, I'm a single mum to be. Fingers crossed. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Um, so I'm in the process at the moment of going through IVF as a single parent. Um, I've been single now about four years, five years, mm-hmm. and I live with a disability, so that's always had an impact on why I have become single or are single like people don't get it trying to struggle Mm. with the whole dating and people think I'm a bit weird or I call it quirky (laughs) (laughs) and yeah it's obviously a lot of people may not want children on on their own or experience problems when you've had relationships and then um, maybe the relationships break down and then people who then have children sometimes then are struggle maybe to find someone else because people don't want to yeah. take children on and so forth oh, and so me, forth. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to blog my whole journey with IVF because when I look online, there's literally nothing. You get mm-hmm. people speaking about it, this, that, the other, but a lot of people are really quiet from the IVF perspective. I've is that, is that all people. IVF or is that IVF for, as a single person? Because I'm guessing those are two, there's a, there's a niche of IVF and then there's a niche within a niche of single yeah. parents who are doing IVF. So when it's been IVF, whereby they're in a relationship and they're doing IVF, a lot of people, um, probably quite rightly, are really quiet on that part because either the male part may, they may have to go through a sperm situation or maybe it's the eggs and the woman's not not um, working correctly in that, that perspective. So a lot of people mm-hmm. are very quiet from that perspective and will stay quiet and other people sometimes who are single parents also stay quiet um it, it, I'd, I'd say that's probably more 50 50 like some people i've spoken to will talk about it because it's kind of putting it into laneless terms some people will go oh well i don't want people to think i've got laid or had a one night stand so i will be honest and i will tell people mm-hmm. from that perspective but then other people won't say anything because of how the family react to it and some people may be supportive other people may not be i write about dating because like, like you were saying about ivf when i started dating there was nothing out there at all for for men other than how to pick up chicks how to make her want you and all that sort of stuff that's you know, i'm a middle-aged man i'm not that so i'm not that horrible person um So I wanted to write about what it's like to go through divorce as a man, because we don't talk about emotions, to go through being a single parent and then to dating as a single parent after divorce. It was a whole bunch of of things. Everyone can just do it. Just go basically, there must be some online Argos that you can just order the right person at the right time, tap the buttons. And if you can't get that one, they'll give you an alternative suggestion that I'm sure will be just as good. I know, right? And we're still single, yet still this magical (laughs) system's there. So like when I've been on dates before, sometimes I'll get twitches and I'll throw drinks over people by mistake. Um, or the awkward conversations where you talk about the disability sort of thing on that front. Or I've been bowling and instead of bowling forward, I've bowled backwards and <laughs> hit people in the but knees. Am, am I right in thinking that, that guys are, do, do guys come across as quite embarrassed because... I'm sitting there thinking uh, the disability you live with is is part of you. It's part mm-hmm. of your life. And so if I was interested in you, I would feel no less embarrassed talking about it than I would be if you said, oh, I'm really into netball um, or I'm a massive anime. I'd want to know more about it to understand more about you. Um, mm-hmm. And I wouldn't feel as embarrassed asking about it, but it sounds like most guys are. Is that is that fair? I, I'd say, again, it's a bit of both. So I <laughs> think sometimes it depends on the person. So like... Two of my ex-boyfriends were perfectly cool about it, where others, 
it's just been a bit I'd say it's been a bit of an inconvenience to them it's like I can't do everything maybe the average person might be able to do like they want to go mountain biking and I can barely cycle down the road (laughs) without being out of breath or like probably without falling off my bike or long walks and stuff or I might have to go in the wheelchair at points if it's long distance and it's for me, sometimes but... that's the level of embarrassment but I'll be like look dude it's fine because I'll I'll, I'll get us through the fast pass at oh. Alton Towers don't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna have to keep for two hours <laughs> so for me and this this is maybe just the ridiculous way I work I would see something like that as every one of those I'm thinking is an opportunity for romance an opportunity for uh, the person you're with to to go above and beyond and to to make something happen and to 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 show that they they care and they're thinking about you and that if you want to do those things mm-hmm. as well they're helping you to find ways of doing it yeah I'd say some people have been like that but then you get it then where it's kind of a compliment but with a backhanded compliment so I was dated I dated this lad about two years ago three years ago and he was a real real nice lad mm-hmm. and then he lived in Wales so obviously that was quite hilly and he's like, oh, okay, jump on my back. So I was like, okay, like I love piggybacks. Jumped on his back and he's uh, got big muscles, me, haven't I? I was like, yeah, I love your piggybacks. Went, no fireman's lift though, and that's too scary. Took me up to the top, he high five me. That's great that he says, I've just done my good deed for today. And I'm kind of just like, now, did you want to do it or was it a good deed? Like, didn't yeah. really know how to handle it. It was like, great that he done it, but then it felt like a backhanded compliment. Like, yeah. So that's sometimes what you can experience from that perspective. So yeah, yeah. I guess it goes <laughs> goes back, and I don't I don't often refer to friends, uh, but there was, a, there was an episode I seem to recall where I can't I don't know which one of them they were saying there is no such thing as an altruistic deed, and saying every good deed you ever do, there's a reason that benefits you, even if that reason is simply to make you feel good that you did something. Um, and so I guess it goes back to that argument is, and are you doing it because you, you want the other person to it because you want to feel good because you want to be seen to be feeling good. It, it's, it's a, it's a, a fascinating kind of a weirdly, um, oh, what's the word philosophical argument for, for a friend's episode, but uh, <laughs> it is, is a really interesting idea. But how about yourself? How have you found all the dating side of things, especially of late? Oh, it's been amazing. I'm going on several dates a week. Um, supermodels haven't got shows, so all they want to do is come out with. By the way, I've got I've got the world's creakiest chair, so you'll probably hear a little bit in the background. I apologise for that. Um, no, it's it's been it's been <laughs> it's been ridiculously tough. And and for me, dating is incredibly tough anyway. Um, as you mentioned, I've got four kids, and for not just four kids, but four kids who live with me half the time. I've I've literally just half an hour ago packed them off to to stay with their mums for a week. So every other week. I have my kids with me and that's it. They're, they're, they're there. And I've got four of them. What eldest is 16, youngest is seven. So it's not even like they're all in their late teens and all moving out anytime soon. I've still got some, some parenting time to do. Um, and so I'm, I'm middle-aged, I'm divorced. I've got four kids who live with me part-time and I don't live in London um, or any major city. I live a few miles outside of Maidstone in Kent, you know, why would anybody choose to swipe on me when you can basically swipe on someone who's got far less, and I'll use the term that's commonly used, far less package. Um, there's so many options out there. It's such a disposable swiping culture that out of a hundred right swipes I'll make to say, I'm interested in you, I'm interested in you. Um, I might get three or four matches um, of which rarely, if more than once, a, once out of every 10 15 of those does it go past the first day so this is it that's in normal times now we're in lockdown <laughs> times you've got the the alternatives of either i'm swiping in and actually matching with people who have got no interest in ever meeting they're just they're bored they're sitting in their houses and all they want to do is sit and talk and chat and mm-hmm. and and that's it and then you've got the other sort of people who who they, they don't want to do that so like they do want to meet and so they're not going to be swiping now they're just working on themselves and by that I mean binging Netflix and eating <laughs> chocolate um, and he says that while sipping wine so I'm no different to that um, but I'm, I'm not stopping just because for me a hu- it's a whole Gretzky thing of 100% of the shots you don't take don't go in mm-hmm. and so even if I end up swiping for and I have been pretty much swiping <laughs> for for most of the last year and so on this year um, and I've just been swiping because you never know and that's mm-hmm. that's the, the drug that hooks you in but when it's the only option I've got, I don't, I don't, at the moment we can't meet anyone, but in, in four years of being single, um, 
I've met one person in real life, one person in real life, and that's it. So that would have been the only person I'd have had any sort of relationship with. Mm -hmm. In four years, not one of my friends has, has hooked me up with someone and said, I, I think you've, <laughs> even if it didn't work out, they've never said, I think you'd, you'd, you'd enjoy meeting this person. And so that's not a good ratio. So swiping is the only option I have to make these things happen. Um, and because all my mates, they're all engaged, married, relationships, they're all starting their families now in their sort of mid thirties, late thirties, early forties. Um, whereas I was doing that in my early twenties. So now I'm single, I'm like, go on, let's, just, let's, let's go out, let's have fun and let's see what can happen. And they're like, no, so I'm babysitting. Yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm, I, I can't get a babysitter. I've, I've got to look after the kids or I've got, got work, I've got to do this. And it's like, I can't just go out randomly and see where the night leads. But you mentioned though about like children and stuff and like being divorced, but I don't see why that should ever make a difference because as we've said with myself, like we're living with a disability and stuff, that's part of you. And it's what could have shaped who you are today, like, you know, different oh, it, life lessons and so forth. And it's made you who you are. It so absolutely has. And, but that's, that, that's the difference between you as an enlightened person and most of the population. There's, there's a bell curve of, of uh, kind of tolerance when it comes to, to what's always termed as baggage. Um, and, like I say, when there's so many options out there, I'm, I'm, I'm also fighting against my age. Now, if I was doing this 15 years ago, so early mid twenties or 15 years later, so I'm in my sort of, well, not 15, but I'm 40 now. So I'd be sort of in my for, late forties, fifties, that sort of thing. The people that I'm going to be dating, because I'm not one of these people who, who wants to date someone who's, I, I, I look at 21 year olds and I can appreciate beauty. I can appreciate an incredible looking woman, but I'm not attracted to them because they're only like four and a half, five years older than my daughter. And I find that weird. Yeah. Um, so I want someone uh, who's roughly in the same sort of age bracket. I usually go, could I have gone to school with them? Basically, do they know that He-Man is from, or well, Skeletor is the bad guy from He-Man and not from the money supermarket adverts. So that kind of six years either way, yes, slightly one way, slightly the other, I'm okay with that. But generally speaking, I want the same sort of age bracket. Now women in that age bracket, generally speaking, either have kids and so they're, they're less likely to be wanting to date or worried about um, kind of big families and all this sort of stuff because four is not a small number. If I had one, it'd be easier. But um, so they're either looking for someone who hasn't got kids so would be willing to be part of their lives or who wants to start a family of their own. And I've been through so uh, several relationships where, I, well, not say we're relationships, no more than a couple of months, where it's been very clear that they want kids and they are they were kind of umming and ahhing about whether it, they could do without having them and my it's such a cliche of my kids are my life I love my kids all that sort of stuff but for me I wanted to be a parent desperately mm -hmm. since the age of 11 I can't I, it was the only thing I ever ever wanted to succeed at it was the thing that would I knew would make me complete and and I can't imagine being there and taking that away from someone because mm -hmm. I, I can't have any more even if I wanted to that was uh, I took that decision into um, my doctor's scalpel uh, several years ago when after my fourth and so I'm not going to be in a position to have any more children I've got no problem with them having children like having them that uh, pre-existing children that, that would come into a relationship great I've got no problem with that but I can't have any new ones and it wouldn't be fair on me to they might be happy but I'd always wonder whether they regretted that and I, I don't I don't want a, a relationship which starts on regret. So, yeah, the, the kind of the pool of women that is out there for me, uh, it, every time I think of I think of a, a new kind of parameter for why they would not be interested in me or why it wouldn't work. The numbers get smaller and smaller until you go from sort of 10 million in the greater London and home counties region. I think I did the maths once. and I think it, there's about 700 women who in all the Venn diagrams of. <laughs> Are okay with this, are okay with that, and happy with this, and all that. I think it's about seven hundred women who fit that thing, and so. And I've been on a lot of dates, so I've dated a lot of them. <laughs> so it's a shrinking number. So I'm I'm trying to not feel bad about not having found them yet, because finding seven hundred out of ten million that's that's a challenge. And it only takes one person. It only takes one swipe from that. But I don't know if you're like me and you're on several different apps. Is oh, yeah. I have found it's the same people on different apps. So it's like you go on Hinge and it's yeah oh no I've already matched him on Bumble oh, I've, I've already done that one on Tinder and it's kind of <laughs> just like uh it's just forever the same people 
so how did you find the TV show with dating on that side of things? Like if we start with uh, the Five Guys Week, let's go for that one. So, uh, yeah, that one came out of the blue, actually. Um, apparently they'd been kind of recruiting for it for, for months and months, but I got a call on the way back from, of all things from an antiques show in Birmingham that I went to with a friend and seen my personality on Twitter and all that and thought, oh, let's, let's have a chat. And that was on I don't know, the end of November, um, end of October by, by November, we were filming. And it, so I didn't really have much time to, to think it through. Uh, and so we went, basically the, the, for those who haven't seen the show, it's you go into a house and it's the actual house of the woman choosing. So there's one woman, there's always always a woman choosing because there's a, a, a big thing about power dynamics. It, as much as you know, I would quite like to have five women uh, vying <laughs> for my affections, uh, realistically, it, it doesn't work the same way. It's, it's, we live in a different sort of society. So it's always one woman and five guys who she actually has chosen out of a whole plethora of options. Um, as people she'd like to, to get to know and see if she'd like to, if they want to, if you, you match and you want to start a relationship. And in typical kind of uh, bachelorette or uh, big brother style, one you, you go into an actual house. So this isn't a, a, a set or, or a stage or anything like that. You're in, in an actual house and you stay there for, for a handful of days. And every single day, one of the house is asked to leave. And so I was in there. And I looked around, you, you turn up, and of course, you're around these other guys. Now, I didn't know this, but all the other guys in there, I'm not saying that I, they're lovely, I get on with most of them really well, um, but they were all the sort of people who, they've, they've, got, they've got model profiles, or they're, they're, they've been on all the TV shows because they're building a media profile, and they want to, they want, they want to be part of that. I wasn't, you know, I, I'm, I just, I do stuff with councils, that's all I do. Um, so the first person um, in the house was a, a professional, no, first, uh, first person to leave the house was a professional surf instructor from the Canary Islands. Super cool. And i got to say, damn hot as well. He is a sexy man. Um, second guy was a professional stunt man um, who had a couple of world records for upside down push-ups. So cool. So lovely. The third guy to leave the house was a, a professional singer songwriter who'd come in come over from the U S um, lovely guy, so, so talented and so raw emotionally. It was really, he's, he's a great guy, even if he is a Chelsea fan, which left, <laughs> which left me a little nobody with four kids uh, and a millionaire uh, pilot banker um, with no kids. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, I'm not going to give you any spoilers about which way she chose, but all I will say is I, I am still single. And I think she chose wrong, but <laughs> well, thank you. I so so do I. So do I. We, we we're friends now. We're good friends. We we catch up really regularly. Me and her. Um, I think they didn't last more than two days. Um, but yeah, me and her, we 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 still catch up, and and she's happily in a relationship now, which is wonderful, and I'm very jealous of her, um, or envious anyway. But yeah, it was it was such a lovely experience because I was going into it, um, thinking I'm not in this for fame. I'm not in this for fortune. You know realistically for, for these sort of things they film pilots all the time for loads of stuff and they never the pilot never gets seen usually they film the pilot and they work out all the kinks all the issues all the problems all the challenges and then if it works they they commission the full series mm -hmm. now not only did they uh, channel four it went to cans apparently our faces were on billboards all over cans festival when it was wow. i mean I magazines and all this sort of stuff very surreal i saw pictures of it it was amazing um but not only did they commission two full series of this um, they also not only included our show the pilot as one of those but they made ours the very first one because they thought it worked so well as a as a, a complete episode which just basically never happens and it was it was lovely because like i say i was going into it not for fame not for fortune but genuinely to find someone to be with, to, to, to meet someone. I figured, oh, hopefully, okay, she might choose me and, and we live happily ever after. I mean, what a, what a, what a story to tell on the anniversaries. Um, but if not, then maybe someone might see the show and think, he's quite nice. Let me find him, let me message him and, um, or get in touch with him in some way. So I figured either way, win-win. Worst, what's the worst that could happen? I could humiliate myself on national telly um, and it'd be seen forevermore, which thankfully didn't happen. <laughs> Has many people would reached out after the um, Five Guys Weeks? I know when Take Me Out was on, this is, God, I'm trying to think how I would have been, probably 22, 23. There was a 
guy on there called David and mm-hmm. he loved Disney like they filmed him in his bedroom and it was full of Disney he had all the Disney DVDs he'd go to mm-hmm. Disney every single year and I love Disney and especially Lilo and Stitch in particular Stitch and I was like oh my god that's my dream guy that's my dream guy so yeah. I wrote him a letter wrapped it all up all that sort of thing and then an, I sent an, it an actual, to take me out letter yeah, sent it. Hand, handwritten letter. Handwritten letter. Wow. It had all my details in it, like get in contact with me. And I sent it to take me out. And then one day I was traveling somewhere with my parents and I got a text. And I was kind of like, David, who are you? Like, but, you know, it's been that long since mm-hmm. I'd sent it. And he's like, um, you sent me a message um, through um, take me out. I've just received your letter. It was really nice. Then we were in contact. Then he invited me to the reunion t- 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 take me out party. Wow. Um, in Manchester. But annoyingly, he didn't turn up. Like, he didn't go to it. But all these other lads went to it. And I didn't, obviously, I was only going to see him. And these lads were like, I don't recall you on the show. And I was like, <laughs> no, D- David asked me to come. And then this little lad's like, oh, can I have your number? I'm just kind of like, oh, I've not really come here to see you. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Yeah. Kind of just like, I'm going to go now. Just like, this is really awkward. Oh, well, people do awkward. do it. David, you're an idiot. Yeah, he's missed out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but no, I, I I had a few people get in touch with me just to 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 say I enjoyed the show, um, and uh, I thought she I thought she made a mistake, and uh, I like parsnips because um, that was a little snippet from it. Um, but so far, I've not had anyone romantically reach out, or and it was it was it was also a little bit frustrating because, like I said, we were the first one, so we we went on met Phil and Holly. Um, that uh, yes, yeah, so we went on this morning. That's the one. Uh, so we went on that and and so on. And we aired basically the week before lockdown. And so of course, all the the kind of I won't say after show opportunities, but everything just got washed away in terms of coronavirus and pandemic and lockdown and everything. So yes, the the show was a a, a useful re- kind of retreat for people mentally and emotionally. Um, because it is lovely TV, but yeah, I mean, there wasn't the opportunity to maximize on my time there, which is a shame. And I, 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 I wish I could have. I, again, it would be a lovely story to to hear that sort of thing with someone saying, "I saw him on telly," uh, and I tried to get in touch, and and we went out, and we we really got on. But so far, no no luck. You know, you've done other TV dating as well. Um, first dates. Yeah, I've been on first dates as well. I get, I, that one was relatively early on in being single. Uh, and I only I, I applied drunkenly one night because yes, that's that's when all the best stories start mm-hmm. is when you're drunk. Uh, and so I applied out just out of curiosity, just thinking nothing's going to ever happen because over a quarter of a million people apply to every series. It's it's huge. Wow. Uh, the next like pretty much the morning of the next day, I woke up not remembering that I'd applied really, and got a phone call from. Him. I only applied because I wanted to meet Merlin. <laughs> yeah, that, that bartender is so cool. I love, love him. him. Um, and they said, look, look, we we've we've heard about your we've read about your story. Um, we want to get you in, and then you go in, you do the initial, do the phone interviews, and you do some initial face-to-face interviews. Then they do the filming in front of the big heart shape in the background and so on. Uh and 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 yeah, I think I might have been more specific now than I was back then. Basically, I was like, look, I, I don't care. She's just got a I, I want someone relatively good looking nice hourglass figure um don't care about hair eyes background whatever just someone who's witty and fun and on paper they match me with someone really really good um on paper uh but trouble was she her previous relationship had broken down because her ex didn't have any time for her didn't just didn't basically deprioritize her and her daughter um something rotten and, and just that was horrible and, and admittedly that is horrible and she knowing that I've got four kids that live with me half the time at the time they lived with me full time, um, but live with me at least half. Like I'm, a, I'm in their lives. I'm not just a, a weekend parent. And as that works for some people, just not for me. Um, she knew that I'd never be able to prioritize her and her child above all others. So yeah, it was never to be sadly, but great fun. And I can totally see why Sam, the waiter gets people's numbers. He is a sexy man. I applied for first dates and I got, through quite far t- towards the end had all my interviews and stuff had all the video chats and then they were going through then the preferences so it's like before when you was talking about your age and like you know about six years this way six years that way I was pretty similar but a little bit less on that part mm-hmm. 
because, because I was well, I was 28 at the time when I was looking at doing the first date side of things. And I was kind of like, well, I don't really want to go out with 25 because I find guys tend to mature that little bit oh, later. To. Definitely, so yeah, yeah. I, I would quite like 26 plus, like not mm-hmm. at all younger, like just, just older. Like, you know, I'll happily go up to like 32 maybe. And then he's like, well, what happens if we tell you your dream guy is 23? And I'm kind of like, no, that's too young. Like, <laughs> it's like I, I, I'm literally near enough TT. So I was like, he's probably going to be going out partying. And I was like, if you tell me he's not partying and maybe he's got children or he doesn't smoke, then yeah, I might entertain it. There's like, you should be mm-hmm. going 10 years each way. And I'm like, I'm not that bad, am I? That I need to go 10 years each way, <laughs> seriously. And yeah, they would kind of just like, yeah, go 10 years each way. So now, I mean, now if, I'm at 30, I'm not going to go out of 20 year old. That's like going out of a teenager. So I was kind of like. I agree. Although, um, and I, I won't, won't dwell on it too much just because it's relevant. Uh, my, the reason I got divorced was because my, my wife was 36 at the time and she had an affair with a teenager. So wow. it can happen. And she's still with him. Um, I, I find it weird. I find, but that's that. You know, there's, there, that's my issue. Not We're her on the issue. same page. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I, like I say, I just. I, I can't imagine going out with someone who is in their early twenties because they 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 haven't lived a life. They haven't all the experiences I've got. I've been I've literally travelled around the world. I've uh, I'm, I've got to a stage of my career, and I'm not I'm not saying it, uh, it's high or low or whatever. But you know I've 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 worked through the ranks and I've I've had all those experiences, um, and I I know who I am. Nobody knows who they are in their early 20s. They simply haven't had that life experience. Or if they have, that life must have been brutal <laughs> and absolutely shaped them beyond all recognition. Um, but all, you're forming your values in your early 20s. So you're at home these days until your late teens, sometimes even later than that. And so you're still in that childhood state. And you're as you grow through your early 20s, mid 20s, late 20s, you're, you're establishing yourself as a person what your values are, how you fit in with society, what your an- ambitions are. And, and you might think you know then, but I always used to sit there thinking, and looking back on myself two or three years ago, thinking, you know what, I thought I knew what I was doing then. I, I knew nothing. Now I know what I'm doing. And then three years later, I'd look back at that time and say, I thought I knew what I was doing then. I, I knew nothing, but you know what, now I, was, and I think that's always going to continue. But my God, I'm a, I'm a, a fundamentally more rounded, more secure, more confident um, happier person now than I have been at any stage of my life. And I can't imagine seeing someone in their early twenties and thinking they're the finished article mm-hmm. and thinking they're, they're going to stay that way. And I'm happy with that. I, I, that's, it's not for me. Okay, but you say that though, again, about like children from that perspective, if you know, someone's got children, then you know that you'll always be at least second because the children mm-hmm. are for foremost the most in, important thing it's like I've never once ruled out guys that have children and I'd always work out the dating around the children like I dated a guy about 10 mile away from where I live and he was a very active dad similar to yourself and he would do the school pickups with the children and mm-hmm. every other night he would have the children sleep over from that perspective obviously sleep over he'll also then drop them off so he only had like Tuesdays Tuesdays Thursdays and Sundays pretty much free where he could see somebody from that perspective and I was cool with that because I'm not the kind of person which is I don't want to see a boyfriend every day it'll probably drive me insane maybe (laughs) yeah this is where I'm blessed for lockdown I I think I I think I'd have gone absolutely nuts if if I was living with my ex it's just like ah um it's yeah, I think when you've got children, they should be the most important thing. And I think that then says a lot more about the person as well, yeah. because I probably use the phrase part time dad. I only see them at the weekend. That to me, it's kind of no guys step up to it. You know, why should it always be the woman that has them up part of the week? Why not you? You know, it's you've got kids meet, meet them halfway one week, yours one week theirs. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. there are challenges. So if you if you both got kids, and um, I was speaking to someone recently, we realised that uh, so I don't have mine half time. She doesn't have hers every other weekend, but they're on alternate weekends. So at some point, if that was or had mm-hmm. progressed, we would have had to change childcare arrangements as well. But but it's possible. And I was dating mm-hmm. someone for for several months, and and that just worked. So she again, she lost the kids every every other weekend, and so we would just that would be our time. 
then I'd spend the following week when I was not having my time with her and her kids. Mm -hmm. um, and then the following week, we just wouldn't see each other or we might see each other every now and then. She's, yeah. to, be, to be fair, she's the only woman I've ever introduced to any of my children. And um, that was for a variety of circumstances. But other than that, I keep my dating life, and my parenting mm -hmm. life separate. My kids know I date, they, they do. Um, but equally, I, I'm so wary and protective of their feelings that I don't want them getting any attachments to anybody that until I'm sure, not sure, you know, be 100%, I've, I now will never forevermore be 100% sure about anything, but until I, until I at least feel that there's a good chance it's got some legs, yeah. it's going to go somewhere and, um, and that, that hasn't happened. But um, if, if I'm with someone and they know how much my kids are in my life, how important they are and how much a part of me they are, if we've been dating or seeing each other for a, for several months and they still aren't even thinking, aren't barely mentioning them, not even thinking about seeing them. Um, it says something to me. I, re I remember one, one time my, one of my kids broke their arm. And Ask so I was, in, I was, I was in panic mode, got it all sorted. Um, and the next day uh, I was, I kind of, my kids went off to their mums. Um, well, not next day, a few days later, the kids went off to their mums and I, I saw her. Um, and I told her what had happened. And her, her first response, oh, that's awful. So I was, there's this, this, this thing happened at work today. And I was, I was so frustrated. I just wanted to talk to you about it. So, are you, did you hear what I said? My, my child broke their arm for the first time. I never know what I was, I didn't know what I was doing. I was, I was scared and I was on my own and trying to look after three other children whilst one of them has got an extra elbow all of a sudden. I'm trying to stay calm, trying to work out what to do. And I was in absolute pieces and all they could think about was their their work issue and that That's that for me good. said said loads so you should be asking how the child is and if there's anything that they could do to support you like do you need anything you know, i know you've got that do you need any shopping getting in you know how can i help you like you yeah if i would have been there for you it, it's, it's it's a balancing act I, I i would be wary if after the first few dates they were saying when can i meet your kids i want to i want to meet them yeah. or i want to be part of life that's not gonna that's not good but the other end of the scale isn't either. I don't want them thinking, okay, when they're away, when I don't see them, they have their kids and they sort that out and that's their compartmentalized bit of life. And then we have a separate thing. I've, I'm, I'm kind of a complete person and um, my kids are always gonna be part of that, but equally they're not all of me and whoever I'm with has to be able to blend in with that and me blending in with them as well. It's not, I'm not saying they have to change, change to accommodate me. It's, and it, it's a, it's a the language kind of fails me but it's not about compromising it's about it's about blending and understanding it's like and, a jigsaw. and esta yeah establishing a new way forward it's like a jigsaw where all the pieces have got the ability to change shape mm -hmm. um, and so at the moment the jigsaw pieces kind of fit together and then you're trying to fit a whole new jigsaw set in with it um, and some of those pieces will have to mold and change and, ev and be different shapes in order to make it fit but if you work hard enough then they will all fit i've never there's probably a jigsaw a jelly jigsaw analogy in there somewhere i'll just I'll, I'll piece it together in some place it's like when i've seen on some of the dating sites especially like over the christmas and new year where people have children i don't just go like hi how are you it's oh hi i hope you and your little one had a good christmas mm. hope hope you both well because they've mentioned they've got a child you can see the child's young in the photos you go um hope santa came and you have a conversation you don't just ignore the fact that people yeah. have children you ask about them and you get to know them like, again it's, it's about seeing be. this is a person and these are all the factors that make them who they are and their children and their relationship with them is one of those factors mm -hmm. so you act without being over the top about it you you want to learn about it you want to understand it you want i want to understand how they are around their kids and what relationship they've got and I'll be honest, as part over time, if it's going somewhere, I want to know their relationship with their ex as well and their, their kids' relationship with their exes. And, mm -hmm. and so on, because these are people that are potentially going to be coming into my life and my children's yeah. life. And so you're kind of teasing out and I'm trying to understand how it might all fit together, mm -hmm. which is always a kind of way of putting the cart before the horse. But it's, it's I'm important. not just dating. Yeah, I'm dating just for me. I'm, I'm not looking for a stepmother or something but I'm dating for someone for me, but they are going to have a positive impact upon my kids' yeah. lives. They're going to be a positive female role model. Um, and so as much as they're, they're in a, the relationship between, between me and them, I have to think about the potential relationship between them mm -hmm. and each of my children. 
Um, and I've always, my kids know that if things aren't right, and I'll, 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 don't get me wrong, it's not like they've got some big X Factor style red button to say, you know, eh, yeah, we don't like her. Um, but if after we've tried everything, if we've given everything a go and been as, as positive about it as possible, if it still isn't working, no person in the world would come between us. And I'd have to regrettably say, this isn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. And and that person needs to understand that and be good about that. And I need to know that they would feel the same. I, I couldn't be with someone who would put me before their kids. That yeah. it just, my mind doesn't compute that way. Um, and so I, it's about teasing out those values. Um, just like I would, you know, are you, um, are you someone who, who uh, likes this sort of, uh, music or if, if someone was a, a, a diehard fully head-to-toe tattoos of country and western stars I, I'm, I'm not a country and western music fan we're, we're not gonna work um, uh, I can do almost any other type of music but you know what I outside of a bit of Dolly Parton I'd, I'd struggle um, but the, the, the interests and values and lifestyles and everything if if they were someone who were constantly saying uh, they're constantly traveling around the world every every other weekend they're, they're jetting off to to another holiday destination either for a, for just a weekend or for a week here or, or wherever I'd love to do that but I can't I've got childcare responsibilities so I can't do that so all these different things that you, you have to find out about someone um, and their their attitudes towards children and that who are theirs or their or other people's is just another factor to have to layer into things and it doesn't make it easy but it's I'm quite pragmatic. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. So I have to, you have to bear, bear that in mind. And as you say, with the whole, if people have children and how they get on with the ex partner and stuff to me, that is so, so important because mm. if, if I'm to go out with a guy and the guy's got children, it's, I'm not there to be step, step mum. I'm not her competition from, mm. from my yeah. perspective. She's got nothing to worry about your mum what you say goes you know I'm not going to say if dad says no yeah go off and do it because that's not my place ultimately from that perspective you know I'm not going to disagree with anything that that the gentleman may say there but if they don't get on then that's going to make our relationship more tough from that perspective because it's going to yeah. cause arguments or when you're meeting the child it's you know it's is she okay with that don't lie and say yeah she is if she's not it's you've got to be honest with each other from that perspective and because if you also get on if so if let's say you know you've got children yourself and the other person's got children you might want to swap that weekend here and there I don't know you want to go away for the weekend because it may be an anniversary or if you're on that good good part of a relationship with an ex-partner you might be able to do that likewise if they ask you you know it, it's give and take yeah and absolutely it's important that that you do get on that we can't expect full-on happy families all, all the way around <laughs> but you know if if you could then again you know that that could be amazing yeah so it's dating as a, a single parent is is not easy um everyone thinks they've got it hard and I, I know in so many ways i've not got it hard um it's one of those things where i'm, I'm very much a uh an abundance mentality of these are all the things i have got you know i i have got um, I won't say all my hair, but you know, you know I've got some That's hair. Some. I've got I've got a face which is an absolutely hideous. I'm not abs. I'm not. I haven't got a body that that doesn't uh, kind of fit into to a couple of seats. You know, I've, I can go on airplanes without having special range. All these things. I'm. I feel that I'm in a privileged position with. Um, I'm not. I'm not uh, eighty or ninety years old. Uh, all these, these, so and I'm 80 or 90 year olds, they can still deserve <laughs> find love and all those sort of things. But, you know, I've got uh, so much ahead of me still. Um, I've got a job that I love that, um, uh, that, that pays me okay money. I've got um, family and friends and opportunity. There's so many things that I have got that I'm trying to concentrate on, on those things rather than all the things that hold me back. And yes, I know if I didn't have children, my romantic dating life would be so much easier, so much easier without hesitation. And I'm not saying that I'm some potential Lothario who could get any woman. I'm not, I'm not. Um, but I know for a fact that um, 
nine out of ten people who match with me as soon as they find out I've got kids or act in my life they they unmatch or the conversation ends that's just the way it is i don't i don't hold it against them um it's a shame because i i know that that with a decent proportion of those we could make things work um but that's their choice not mine um but without kids i wouldn't have that discussion but then i wouldn't have my kids and so they're not they yeah, they're, and again, everybody's different. Everyone values different things. Some people, uh, I've got friends who are absolutely wonderful people who have got the, the richest of lives and are so fundamentally happy with who they are, who never, ever wanted children. That it never was part of their plans, their life, their anything, and they're happy um, being child-free. And I say child-free rather than child-less because child-less implies that children are the thing to go for. Um, and they say child free because actually they, they, they don't have that. Yeah. Um, and that works for them. And for me, like I said, from, from the age of about 11, that's all, all I could ever, on my, my big life roadmap, the only thing I wanted was to be a good dad. And whether, I've got, whether I've got someone with me or haven't, the bit I can control, I can control what you control, influence what you can't control and accept what you can't influence. Mm -hmm. um, and all I, I know that I can control being a good dad and so that's why I'm mean, like can, I can influence whether I find romantic love but I can't control that because that's someone else and all you can do is be an influence on that definitely and and you just got to accept everything else and um so yeah I'm just trying to be as good a dad as I can to keep growing and I wrote a blog post um on my my 40th birthday and I tried the it's the closest I've come to explaining it I said my life is a 10 out of 10 is it, is it perfect no you know i could i could definitely do with an awful lot more money and <laughs> a lot less responsibility and and more fun and more this you know i could it would be i'm not saying it's perfect but realistically my life is complete it's 10 out of 10 but i know that with the right person my life would be 11 out of 10 and that doesn't mean that 10 out of 10 isn't good enough 10 out of 10 is is complete but it can be more complete and so as happy as I am now, I just, I'm not going to stop looking until I find that, that woman who can turn my amp up to 11. Well, that's the thing though. It's like people say to me, I'm just like, so, so chilled out about the whole date. And it's, yeah, you keep looking and stuff, but I won't settle for second best. It's, I know what I want in life. I know where I want to go. And I know I want children, like similar to yourself, always wanted them mm. ever since a very, very young age. Like always wanted to be a parent. Literally every single relationship has always broke down over children. Like the love of my life, who I randomly dreamt of the other night. Um, <laughs> I was going out with him when I was 21. I, I was one of them. I'm always looking after my friends. And like I say, I'm not really a big drinker. So we went to, it was called Super Enigma, which was at uni. And it's where you all get on a coach and you go somewhere in the UK and you all go to a club and you drink. And one of our girls on my course got a bit too drunk. So maybe me, I was kind of like, oh, I'll take you back to the coach and I'll sit on the coach with you. So my night got cut short. My friend passed out on the back. So I was just speaking to the coach driver and his driver mate came on and then I was talking to him and we got chatting, swapped numbers. And then he's like, I think you'd really like my friend. So I was just like, oh, OK, pass my number over. So he did. And then I was meant to meet his mate, but I, got, I ended up in hospital. On, on, on meant to be first date and he's like don't believe you so I took a photo he's like okay I forgive you you, so you when, didn't send him a letter no I didn't send him any letter just texts <laughs> and <laughs> and I got out of hospital and we met up and it started off just as friends like and I feel that and again this is a why I always say I think it's been my best relationship because when it started from friends you really get to know each other on that friend level and I mentioned before about the disability stuff. It's why you're in hospital, you know, what's wrong. That conversation happened day one. So he got to learn that, okay, yeah, she's not that well, or she might end up in hospital. These things happen. So then he got to know me for me on that basis. But we were going out for probably just short of two years. And I wanted to foster because there's so many children out there that, that need that forever home or that home yeah. to help them out in life and to as you were saying before like influence and provide that 
and he didn't want to foster. And obviously, if you've got a house and stuff, you can't do it as a one person. It has to be as a couple. So he said he didn't want to do it. And it'd be children of, of our own. And then we split on the 21st. So that didn't happen. Definitely since 21, been being serious and wanting to look for that. And then there was just my ex. And he was a no-show to the IVF appointment. So then I dumped mm. him. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's... Yeah, I've always wanted children um whether or not that's fostering adopting or of my own and you know there's many ways that you know we can can achieve that so I think women are more lucky than guys like you know it's probably a lot harder for you if you were go back to like let's say 18 19 always wanted children it'd be harder for you to have your own child because you kind of need the woman unless you adopt oh absolutely I mean there's the, the the cynics and the yeah, the, the, the worst case scenario accusations would be if a woman wants a kid, she can go out, have sex and she's got a kid and that's that's it. And I'm, I'm not saying that's good or bad or, or whatever, but that is an, a biological fact. A man can't do the same because, mm-hmm. yes, they can go out and they can have sex with someone and get them pregnant. Um, but that doesn't mean, A, that that woman will choose to keep the child, B, that they'll end up being allowed access to the child. Um, and it, it won't it won't be the same. They won't. If I wanted a kid, I, I had signed up to be a dad full time. I want I, it cuts me to the core every time. I mean, it's been four years now, but every time they leave the house, it, it's horrible. I want to be a dad full time. So to go out and have a baby with someone, um, but then for that kid not to be with me all the time, that, that's it's, it's impossible. There was a, a, a Facebook story, a Twitter story or something that someone shared recently um, where basically that a guy had chosen to go through surrogacy because he was de- like he was desperate to be a dad and so you had this issue with a, a a mother who was pregnant but didn't want the child for whatever reason um and a man who wanted the child um so i don't want surrogacy or, or adoption or, or something yeah. um but he was beyond criticized for how selfish it is to rip a child away from his mother and um, you know, what right has he got to raise a child as a single single man? Men don't do that sort of stuff. Why not? Why not? I'm, I'm just as, if not more parental than most parents out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I ha- have been, and um, now it's only half time, but I was bringing my kids up by myself. And I, if needed, if my ex, I hadn't got back into their lives, I would still be raising my kids by myself I'm capable of doing that and I want to do that um and it's something that has always driven me and I'm, I'm happy to do that and yes that probably means that I won't find uh, that the potential the ones because I don't believe in the one but potential the ones have have been put off by that before we've had the chance to to move things forward but hey I I can't control that all I can do is control being a dad and uh and put myself out there on uh, whatever TV show comes <laughs> along and taking up every opportunity, every event, every uh, everything that I can think of, because like you say, you never know what's going to happen and uh, and where life takes you. What's your, what's your elevator pitch? Go for it. <laughs> oh God, I've got no, I haven't, I, I should, I should probably have one, shouldn't I? My, my, see all my, my, my dating stuff is also bespoke to the other, other person. Um, I, I guess it's one of those weird things where I'm, I'll be absolutely, I'll take the Eminem style of uh, the eight mile style where basically he calls out all of his flaws and undermines all the reasons why someone shouldn't go for him. But you know what? That's me. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a single dad. Um, I've got four kids and, and they're, they're not babies. So they've got minds of their own. Um, I'm restricted. I have them half the time. Um, but that being said, I, I've got ambitions. I want to travel the world again i've traveled the world i want to keep going um so i will be looking for someone who, who who's who's up for random city breaks for a weekend i can work from anywhere in the world with with my job so wherever you want to go we can go um i uh with i'll, I'll say all the cliches of i i like going on adventures and i like <laughs> snuggling up on a sofa in front of netflix and um sunday pub lunches and all that sort of, all of that is true yet all of it is also mundane I'm after uh, someone who my 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 ex-wife called herself my an- my anchor. She would weigh me down so that I wouldn't fly away. Mm-hmm. Um, I want someone who's going to be flying next to me and taking their turn at the front of the train and 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 being okay to 
take a let me take the strain i want i want my michelle obama um and it will one way or another it'll either happen or i'll i'll die still looking but i'm not going to give up there's no point giving up. like like what 40 you know it's, you're going to be on planet earth for many many more years you know you you could only be halfway through your life maybe not even halfway through your life now if if it takes another 10 years you know and this is that, exactly 40 it. years with that right person and that, yeah that's exactly exactly right my mindset wrong. i've got i've got fingers crossed like you say at least another 40 years um if it takes me another year or two or three or four or five or however long now to find the right person to be there with i gen I, I enjoy dating. I have fun meeting people. That's what I get my energy from. But I want to date one person for the rest of my life. And that they've got to be the right person. Because um, I'm going to be spending the rest of my life on adventures with them. It's and, like you want and, it to be your last first date. Yeah, and exactly. I'm, I'm, it, I, I'm going to keep dating. I, I've learned so many lessons over the years about about value in a relationship and, and putting effort into it constantly. So that's something that's in, that's drilled into me, but it's going to be one person mm -hmm. that I'm uh, going to be trying to constantly woo and romance. And hopefully they're going to do the same <laughs> for me. And if I get it wrong, then I don't want to be sitting on a, the, the, the deck of a house in 30, 40 years time next to someone thinking, you know what? I had that chance. I had that <laughs> chance to find someone who, made me want to be a better version of myself and i i settled i just chose someone who was there and who was available and convenient yeah kind of ticked a load of boxes but you know they they didn't make me smile when i got a text from them they didn't they didn't make all my they didn't make me feel butterflies and make all those butterflies fly in formation they they did they were just a person oh my God. I've, <laughs> I've, yeah i've seen it i've seen it happen i've seen it happen in my my family and my friends where you look at them and they're they're together because it, you know it, it, it kind of made sense and it was it was easier than not being together no mm -hmm. sod that i i want and i'm not talking about the perfect woman because there is no such thing as the perfect anyone but i want someone who yeah just just makes my heart smile constantly and if that takes another four or five years to find you know what that's fine i'll just mm -hmm. i'll just keep dating until i find her Definitely. I mean, sooner or number, I've got, I'll, I'll have dated everyone. So, you know what, it's, it's just about, it's, it's just like, guess who? Just keep knocking them down and eventually you'll work out which one it is. Uh, we, we've got to, it's, it's, the, it's the only chance. It's, but like my friends were saying to me, you know, have you not thought about settling down before, before you have a little one? Like, do you not think that's going to be harder than once you have a baby? And I'm just like, well, no, because I could easily just meet a single dad at nursery. You mm -hmm. know, just my little child might be, you know, they get the best friend and then, oh, dad is <laughs> single. My mummy's single. It's like, oh, hello. Oh, I wish at that the I could walk I would, I, I'd <laughs> love to be able to walk into the school playground and, and know who is single and uh and look around and think you know there's all these options out there now which which one am i gonna speak to but 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 no it's not maybe maybe i need to move back to london what what was london like for the dating was it was it better i, I well i never lived in london when i was single i've only been single since i moved down to to kent okay. um, so i work in london I, london's my home and i only moved to kent because it's within an hour of london and i know those who don't live and work and were from london feel that you know this london centric nature there's other cities that are great yes there are but london's my home and i genuinely think it's the greatest city in the world because and I, other cities have got great things not just in in the world but in the uk manchester I, I i my dad used to live in macclesfield i spent so much time up there um i've been to to most of the major cities in the uk and they're all wonderful and fun and all that but stick them all together and you're just about at the size and scale of London mm -hmm. stick them all together and you're just about getting to the level of variety and depth and history and everything that you've got within one tube map and this condensing of everything the, the history of Paris with the kind of monolithic scale of New York um, the kind of arts and culture scene of of, uh, of Melbourne or Sydney um, and the vibrancy in certain areas of, of Tokyo or something like that. It's got everything in there, all crammed in there. Uh, and you can visit a lot of it for the price of a tube pass. That's it. An Oyster card or whatever they are these days. Yeah. Uh, I, I love it. 
Um, and I understand all the accents because uh, this is how you're meant to talk. Everyone else has got an accent. If you're from East London, <laughs> you, you, you don't. Where's your favourite place in London? Oh, there's there's a there's a few there's there's a a couple of um I call them speakeasies because they're places where you don't really know they're there they're non like a nondescript doorway and you go through it and there's there's one in uh is it uh not Spitalfields Market Bishopsgate um and you go in there and you go down some stairs through a curtain and it's an underground um Parisian jazz bar with cocktails and so on. Um, but you walk past it and it just looks like a conference center side door and you don't know what it, there's a, a great my favorite dim sum place is, is in chinatown it's called the jade door and again in chinatown you've got neon signs all over the place this is literally just a door nobody knows it, but you have to go up to it even knock on it if it's shut or find your way in you go up three flights of stairs and it's the coolest the best dim sum in the city um, but you don't, if you didn't know about it, you wouldn't know about it. There's a um, uh, Zinfandel's, which is a uh, kind of a, an, an Americana 1920s style art deco bar, just a, a few minutes walk away from Leicester Square. And again, outside, it's just a normal cafe. But then when you go in, you go down some stairs and so on. It's this underground art deco complex, which is just incredibly cool. I, and I, I love those. Mm -hmm. I like being able to say wherever I am, I'm no more than 10 minutes walk away from somewhere that most Londoners don't know about. And, and that only comes from going out a lot. And so that's, that's why I end up going out as much as I possibly can. And it sucks at the moment, obviously, with the pandemic and that we can't go out and probably experience some of these things, but we might be able to experience some of the greeneries and stuff um, around our local areas. Like on conference calls at work, one of our bosses were like, didn't know my area had this like da -da. <laughs> and it's like this huge lake and he's and I'm like how could you not know your area had a lake and then I went for a walk one day and was kind of like wow I didn't realize that we've got like <laughs> this little foresty wood and it's down at the older like railways and stuff so it's like converted like railway tracks and railway lines and it's um, now into like forestry but they've mm -hmm. still got their old platforms I was walking down it go that looks like a platform that and I'm actually walking on the railway like yeah. it's like wow Oh, I, I agree. I, I I spent years, I moved down to Kent, it's 2021 now, I moved down here in 2012. Um, but most of my time was working elsewhere. So I'd, I'd come home, but I'd drive to work whether I was working over in southwest London or in central or, or all, when I was commuting all around the country and kind of sales and that sort of stuff. And so I'd be going out, going out, going out, coming back, going out, coming back, going out, coming back. And that was it. And it's only over the past few years that I have been going on walks and and finding the like I live in a, a valley of um was it uh, outstanding natural beauty apparently I didn't know this because I never explored it and now I get to find these little forest areas and glades and um little river walks and little villages and um I'm enjoying it I just I just uh to 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 labour a point, I think I I'm looking forward to exploring these with someone else because I feel like that would be an excuse mm -hmm. to to actually go out and and find a, vi a vineyard and and actually uh, see what that's got to offer as well. What is that first thing you want to do when lockdown is over and the pandemic goes away and we're all free to do whatever the hell we want? What is that first thing you want to do? Uh, one of the first things I want to do. Um, it's something that I'm planning on doing at some, well, two things. One, it, it will take some planning, uh, but it was my 40th birthday last year and I had planned uh, a great Gatsby themed birthday party. I'm not talking, I'm not just talking about you turn up in a costume. I'm talking about live music. I'm talking about champagne pyramids. I'm talking about entertainment and cool. close call magic and canapes and the, the works. So that is going to happen. If you need um, live music, dude, I've got people for you. I've got yeah, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be tapping you up for that one because yeah, Do I it. want, I, I just want the, the coolest um, swing music and sort of it's, it's Gatsby. It's 1920s. It's, it's big bandy type stuff. Um, so I'm, I, I want that to happen. Yeah. I, I just wanted some, I've never, um, I've never had a birthday party, so it's really, not, really annoyingly <laughs> creepy. Um, I've never had a, 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 my ex tried to throw me a, su a surprise 30th birthday 
um, myself and arrange kind of bowling for people to turn up to and so on. For, I've, I'm impossible to surprise. I knew it was going on. And <laughs> I think only only about six people turned up. And it was every every time I've tried to have a party, it's always been a letdown. And I just thought this time around, it's going to be different. You know what? So that I'm doing it myself. I'm taking control. It's going to be epic. And because I'm one of the older ones in my old friendship group, not 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 the ones I've met over the last few years, um, but I wanted to do something by which other parties would then be judged. And yes, I know that's horribly narcissistic, but I wanted to do something which was just, you know what? The, I've went to that party and that was a great party. I want a party that, that's going to be talked about for years to come. And I'm not going to do them all the time. I'm not probably won't do another one until my 50th, if then. But I just wanted to say, you know what? At this moment, I'm, I'm 40 years old. Um, and yes, I'm single. Um, but other than that, my life is good. I'm happy. I've got family. I've got friends. I've got so much going for me. And I want to set, I want to celebrate that because people don't so often you only look back and realize how good things were. Um, like for, uh, Stephen Fry did a, a wonderful series. He was driving around the US in a black cab and he, he said this thing about the Empire State. That, and I don't know if you've been to New York, oh, I but love when, that, yeah. when, when you're there, you, you go to the Empire State and you look up and you know what? Yes, from the base, it's a nice building and it looks big and all that, but realistically there's a load of other nice buildings that are fairly big as well. And it, it doesn't look all that. It's nice, but it's, not, it's only when you, the further away you get from it, the more impressive it becomes. Yeah. And I, and it's so often that we look back on our lives and we see these moments and these times and you, you don't appreciate at the time how good things are. And it's only when you go further ahead and you look back and you think, you know, you know, that was a really good time. Whether it's, it's working with the right group of people mm -hmm. or having the right group of friends or a, a perfect moment with a loved one or, or something. And it's only when you get five, 10, 15 years down the line, you look back and think, wow, I wish I'd, I wish in that moment I'd realized how lucky I was. And I generally realize that I'm bloody lucky to be so happy. And I just wanted to, to have that moment when I thought, I want to share that. I want to share that happiness with a bunch of people who want to come together and have fun for no reason other than 40 years ago, I came into life. Um, and so it's going to happen. It, it won't be for 40th. But it, and it probably this this time around won't be 41st, but 42nd. Wow. That's, I'm all over that. Um, but the other thing I'm going to do is is actually something that um, is I'm sure you probably could make a business out of this. But I'm sick and tired of people moaning. It's definitely men, by the way, men are crap crap at this and i say this i don't get to see many men's dating profiles mm -hmm. but every time i have seen loads of, of female friends will happily show me how like men men are rubbish our photos are terror the amount of pe guys who rely on on photos of them holding a fish or something oh like God, that i've said that to people and i said to someone on facebook yesterday like facebook's now got a dating profile yeah. and i sent him a message and i was like hi and then i looked through his photos and i went What's with the fish pick? Like, it's not going to impress me. But I, to date, and everyone says, oh, yeah, everyone's, some women might like, I've yet to hear even a hint of a woman who says, that man held up a big fish. That's really attractive. But, no. Uh, it, and it just doesn't happen. <laughs> I asked this lad yesterday, I was like, what is with it? And he went, well, it's meant to show that I like nature and that I, that I really like being outdoors. Nope. And I went, no, I says, I don't get that. I says, I get that you like giving fish whiplash and then yeah, and, yeah. and that you like sticking things in its mouth. Like that's yeah, what you, you I You like catching <laughs> fish and, and you like spending lots of time by yourself away from other people. That's 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 not attractive, dude. No. And I, I know I'm not the target audience here, but having spoken every single without exception, every single woman has said exactly the same. So and all they're all really badly taking selfies or they Drinking. might be a group shot of them with their with their lad mates kind of ladding it up self-esteem that one though it's, it's because just... you might like one of my friends so <laughs> it's they tend to do that as the main picture because then you might go oh he's cute and it's not actually him yeah, like there was exactly. one where it was two people all the way through and i was looking at it thinking well i like him on the right but yeah <laughs> <laughs> is he the or, left or the right 
And then you've got the, the, the drug tiger photos or the photos of them standing next to an expensive car, which quite clearly is not their Rented, car. At least. Um, <laughs> so basically what I want to do is get a big group of people, if most of them are men, even better, but uh, actually, you know what, people in general. Um, and we're going to do a pub crawl, but a pub crawl where you have to have to come along with different changes of clothes. And the idea is I, I know some exceptionally photographic cool places around London. So we'll start at one place. I won't, I won't say we're quite going to do a monopoly thing. We have to have one drink at every station on every, <laughs> not every, every stop on a monopoly board. That's mad. Um, but I'll take people for an entire day of daytime photos, nighttime photos we're, uh, around some uh, sites of London, um, some places which you don't know it's London, but it just looks really cool. Yeah. Um, and the whole point will be the entire day. Every person has to be taking photos of every other person doing cool, having fun, mm -hmm. laughing, smiling. Every now and then, Enjoying I want themselves. everyone to be changing clothes so that they've got different clothes on. <laughs> and so they've, it doesn't look like they've just got photos totally from right. one night out. So it's and a, even write in the profile. I usually write my profile for my guy mates and they'll go, okay, you know me better. But there's definitely the business model is do, doing it by workshop, you know, like, you know, we're all going to learn how to write a dating profile. Yeah. So we, we go along every every stop. We, we're um, you don't nobody has to drink, but they're welcome to. We'll be going to bars and restaurants and so on. Um, and yeah, it will be let's just take tons and tons of photos and it will be all shared amongst a single WhatsApp group. So everyone can just share all the photos of everyone else. And you can say, I like that photo of me or someone else can say, I took this. This is a really good photo of you. You should use this one. Um, and hopefully there'll be some people there who might be able to do some editing, not filtering, but editing to make color look brighter and that sort of stuff. Um, and just by the end of it, people will have a set of photos that they can use on their dating profiles and maybe some advice in terms of making it good. I, I feel like as nothing else, that's a public service that I'm doing to the female <laughs> dating community to say, you know what, there will be at least a dozen photo profiles out there which aren't awful. They've done speed dating now all online. I was doing fast love a few mm -hmm. weeks ago. So instead of obviously now being going out, it's now all online. So people are, are even doing cool different stuff now and readapting the businesses and evolving it as well i did the uh, online taskmaster i think it was oh, cool. um with speed date or something like that so you'd basically be it was like a speed dating thing but with smaller numbers only sort of four or five groups of four or five pairs and you as you were going around you had sort of five minutes ten minutes or something like mm -hmm. that and you'd each be given a challenge that the two of you had to do and as you're doing it you're chatting and getting to know each other and doing a task rather than just uh, right. Okay. Hello. Um, yeah. Now I've got to do my elevator pitch and ask you the same questions. And now we move on to the next person. So it was a bit more fun, creative way of I doing like that. It. And I, I just like things which are a bit different and where the, the organizers have thought about it a bit more. Um, I like that one. That is different. It's definitely, definitely. I'd recommend it highly. And uh, yeah, if, if, if any of your listeners or viewers want to get involved in that and, and drop me a line, I'll, I'll quite happily point them in the right direction. My next door, but one, I'm sure she would as well. Like she told me about the online speed date and, mm. and I went to that and I got on well with the first batch, but then the second batch, I felt like it was a job interview. What's your <laughs> anticipations in the next five years? Do you want children? Wow. What kind of lover are you? And I'm kind of like, uh, 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 I didn't really think about it. Do you have children? Do you want children? <laughs> What's your financial goals? And I'm just kind of like, mm. I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, this is this is maybe revealing too much about my personality, but I love it if all the guys are like that because then someone else comes along like me who's who's just a little a little bit more normal or a little bit more talkative or interesting, and all of a sudden compared to them, I'm Leonardo DiCaprio. Well, yeah, that's what happened. Wonderful. <laughs> so, like this guy, like he was just like in, in his in his hoodie, and I was like, "Oh, I like your hoodie." I went, "That might fit me." I see you got a guitar in the back. You're gonna play me a song, like mm -hmm. just like spice it up a little bit. And then he's like, "Oh, so you've got a guitar?" And I'm like, "Well, I can't play. My hands are really small, but I'll try." Then I mm -hmm. ran out of time. But <laughs> I got his that's number. That's quite a good idea. Well, that, that's the point. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it is just just being a bit different and and being more creative and just standing out from that crowd a little bit because most of the crowd let's be honest half the people in this world are below average we don't, we're not interested in that half so it's about finding the rest of them who actually are interesting and wonderful and speaking of creativity as well i seem on your profile you do some like artwork how did that happen that was was my first ever piece of art 
I, I'm the sort of person who I, unless there's a bloody good reason why I shouldn't do something, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. So I, I decided I wanted a new wardrobe, but it was a, a, an alcove that was in a, a loft and it was, you know, all the wrong shapes and depths and sizes. And there was chimney breasts. So it's just, it's just wood. It's just carpentry. Just make it. Unless there's a reason not for me to do it, then do it. And I realized that when someone put on a tweet up where they were asking about whether their bedroom was, they got criticized because they thought a psycho lived there because it was neat and tidy. And I put mine up and someone said, it's nice, but it's, it's no color. And that got me thinking there, there, it hasn't got any color, but there's a little strip of, of wall only about sort of that high, about 40 centimeters high where that, that's, that's vertical because I sleep and the, above me is a, like the, the, the loft conversion. Yeah. So you can't put paintings on that section very easily. Um, so I, I, I can't buy paintings that are at one and a half, two meters wide, but only 30 centimeters tall. I'll have to, I'll have to make one. So I, I, I worked it well. I built myself a canvas frame, stretched the canvas over it and came up with an idea for, it's probably really, really wanky, but, um, the idea was vertical lines and each, not lines, but vertical brush strokes mm -hmm. and each kind of section of brush strokes would represent my emotions through the week. Mm -hmm. And so you'd have, it would be generally blue, not not because I'm sad or anything, because blue's one of my favorite of colors. And I think it, it's, it's, it's one of the few colors where you can both see it in kind of a vibrant light, in a calm light, in a positive light, in a supportive light, in a sad light. It, it's a color that that represents a full breadth of emotion. And so from one side to another, it was whether I was feeling, when I was feeling sad, then there'd be like strips or, or almost kind of not triangular sections where it'd be blacker and darker, where like I'm sad that morning, but then actually my day gets brighter and then it gets good. And then actually I'll get more sad in the evening, and but then it'll get better the next day. And we, with tiny little streaks of, I don't know, I think of like greens or reds or pinks mm -hmm. or browns or silvers or whites or all these different things, but without any of those individual colors totally taking over the, the, the base. You know, when you do something, you have an idea and then you do it and it turns out at least as good as you thought it would. And you sit there thinking, how the hell did I do that? That's, I really like that. It's, it was so, beautiful. Um, thank you. It was really nice. but. The thing is, I think all art is a masterpiece in itself because if I asked you to recreate that, you couldn't unless you were to scan it because it is so unique. You would never be able to get it to that same stroke, to that same thickness, mm. that level yeah. of colour. It is just a fantastic, unique piece. But it's also, again, it's back to that whole full circle. of It's part of you. That was you in that moment in time, you in mm. that week, and you and your feelings at that moment in time. And, yeah, it was really good. Really like I just, it. as my, it's not meant to be kind of a a real life project. I'm never going to say that I'm an artist, but thanks, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just, for me, it was just there's no reason not to do this. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've got an idea, and I I didn't I didn't care if it, I I'll be honest. There's a everyone's got a degree of narcissism. I like that it, it, other people have said that's good, but. It was always about this is going in my bedroom mm -hmm. and I'm going to be looking at it every day and I need to look at that and and like it and really look at it and think I'm glad I did that. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I do. And that's kind of how I'm living my life these days. It's it's doing things that make me happy mm -hmm. because then if I've shared them with other people and they make them happy, too then that's a that's a wonderful beautiful bonus and you know and it might spark a conversation that, that kind of leads somewhere with someone who knows but if nothing else I know now I've got a a bespoke piece of art in my home I'm sure we'll both get our forever happy story but you know when you meet the next one you'll you'll need to come on and let us know how it's going and we'll do Anytime. we'll be behind you you, know, you never know we'll we'll probably both end up on a, on the same tv show after all this is over although instead of quarter of a million applications will be about a million with the amount of relationships <laughs> breaking down the amount Very of single true. people but yeah, that is not a good thing if nothing else this is again it's, it's about looking at the, the good things and the positives and yes it's horrific and horrible for everyone currently going through emotional mm -hmm. problems and relationship issues and breaking up but you know what there's going to be a lot more single people on the market and uh, one of those one the person that i'm going to fall in love 
love with and who's going to fall in love with me is out there. She exists right at this second, whenever you're listening to this. And there's a chance that, that after lockdown, she might be single. Well, that's about all we have time for today. I hope you really enjoyed getting to know Glenn and you take something away from this. As Glenn did point out, if you want to contact him on, on Twitter, um, you can do that at a dating dad. Um, send him a message. He's a lovely guy and he's a good looking dude. If I lived in London, maybe a few years older, you know, I'd, I'd give it a go. But I think I'm a little bit too young. But do reach out, ladies. You know, you'll be missing a trick if you don't. He, he's an amazing guy. And I'm sure some lucky lady will be sweeping him off his feet in any day soon. So thank you once again, Glenn, for coming on and have a lovely week. Thank you all and stay well and stay safe. Likewise. Thanks so much for having me on.